Hey everybody, I actually wanted to get this video all done and put up on August 22nd, which was the 68th anniversary of the 1952 earthquake, the 5.8 aftershock of the uh, earthquake that leveled to Hatchby and did so much damage to the railroad. But uh, the air was so foul over the last uh, few days with the fire, I just couldn't get it done. It was just it was just too yucky. So uh, the air started to clear up a little bit, so I figured I'd come down and get this done anyway and uh, take you on a little tour of some of the buildings that were damaged, some of them that weren't, like the building behind me, which at that time was the J.C. Penney building. And it sustained no damage. It was a modern concrete reinforced building, and uh, I'm told some windows were broken, but that was about it. So let's cruise around uh, town here a little bit and see what we can see. I'm at the corner of 17th and Chester, uh, right in front of the Haberfeld building. And right over my shoulder here is where the Beale clock tower stood. It stood right in the middle of the intersection of 17th and Chester. This is a view of the clock tower looking northwest from the old Hotel El Tajon. And uh, the city fathers have been trying to get rid of that for a while. Uh, it was interfering with traffic. It was interfering with the trolley cars. It was interfering with about everything. It needed constant maintenance. And uh, the uh, first quake that uh, tore to Hatchby and the railroad up did some damage. Cracked. Uh, there were some cracks in the clock tower after that. And uh, they were already inspecting it, seeing what they could do to take care of that. When the uh, aftershock hit, the 5.8 that uh, knocked the clock faces out of the tower and did significant structural damage to it. And the uh, this is a shot of the tower right after the earthquake. The debris has been cleaned up a little bit, but this is about what it looked like after the quake. And this is a shot of the tower under the wrecking ball once it was decided to get rid of it. City Fathers wasted no time in uh, condemning it, closing it down, and eventually getting rid of it, as you saw in the pictures. But uh, now it's just a plain old flat intersection in 17th and Chester. And this is the Beale Clock Tower today in its present location out in front of the Kern County Museum, Pioneer Village, and this building that is the uh, offices and uh, another part of the museum was once the uh, Chamber of Commerce building. But anyway, there is the clock tower today. It was rebuilt, but it is 40 feet shorter than it was originally. But still a nice looking structure. This is a 1910 shot of the Hockheimer building in the northeast corner of Chester and 19th. And this is looking east down 19th. In 1919, that building burned down and took the 1900 block and the Grand Hotel at 2000 Chester Avenue with it. After the fire, the Hockheimer people moved their building down to 20th and Chester, and this became the Hoskins building. This is the building after the 52 quake. You can see that the parapets had fallen off on the Chester Avenue side. This is, shows the damage at street level with the clock stopped at 445, which is when the earthquake struck. This is uh, how the Hoskins building looks today. I doubt if it's still called the Hoskins building, but uh, you can see it's pretty much just a plain rectangular block now with all the uh, windows on the upper floors painted over. Looks uh, considerably different, but uh, the structure itself, as you can see, remained intact and needed no significant repair work after the earthquake. And here you see Governor Earl Warren, a Bakersfield native, uh, who was inspecting the damage here in the 1900 block of Chester Avenue. And this is where the picture of Governor Warren was taken at that time. It's a little different now, but uh, this is at the Hoskins building in, let's see here. So this is where that photograph was taken, right by that door. 
This is the Learner Shop, which was a women's clothing store on 19th, just west of Chester, on the south side of the street. You can see the damage here. A woman ran out from the store during the earthquake and was killed by falling debris. And this is what Learner's, or where Learner's was. This is what it looks like today. It hasn't been Learner's for a long time. But this is where the one person lost their life. This is the St. Francis Church in its location at Truxton and I Street. Before the earthquake, this picture was taken in the 30s. This is after the quake, obviously. The West Spire has collapsed. Church is in ruins. There's a close-up shot of the spire that was still standing. You can see that it was also significantly damaged. We're looking at the northeast corner of Truxton and I Street. This is where the main part of the church was. The West Spire, the one that collapsed, would have been pretty much right on the corner there where the uh, Kern County Recorder building is now. The rectory was uh, built right next to it. Uh, those buildings were both uh, too badly damaged to be repaired in the quake. And then right here where this building is, this is where the Catholic school was. And here's a photograph of the St. Francis School on Truxton Avenue in the 1940s. Now in 1951, they had already begun construction of the new school over on Palm and Dracena. And uh, they sold this building, the school, they sold it to the city of Bakersfield and they used that for the uh, Bakersfield Police Department headquarters until they built uh, this building here and started using it in 1976. All right, this is the uh, St. Francis Church that replaced the one that was destroyed in the quake. Uh, the cornerstone for this church was laid in 1956 and it was opened in 1958. Looks like it's constructed pretty well and it's unlikely that anything but a really big quake is gonna damage this place. As a little side note, I thought I'd come down here and get a little shot of this. This is the school. Uh, I said Palm and Dracena earlier. Is that Pine and Dracena? Uh, Dracena and uh, Palm run parallel to each other. But this was the original school that was built. Uh, started in 1951 and occupied in uh, 52 after the quake. They actually used the cafeteria here after the quake to uh, hold uh, their services, if I'm correct and the way I read that. But anyway, the St. Francis School now encompasses this entire block, except for a couple of these houses on this side. That's a really big facility now. Beautiful looking school. All right, well, this is the former location of the Kern County Fairgrounds. A lot of people don't realize that this is where it was, at Sam Lynn Ballpark there. Uh, Sam Lynn was here during the earthquakes, built in 1941, but uh, this was where the fair was held, and right there in that open field, that dirt field there, and the uh, I think that's an RC car track over there, uh, that's where the uh, racetrack was. And until, I, I know in, when I was in high school in the 70s, the earthworks were still there, the big embankments and all that, the bleachers and tower and all that were gone, but the, but the uh, earthworks for the racetrack were still there. I'm not sure when they took all that out. But this is where the parking for the fair was. And uh, this is where the county had its temporary facilities after the earthquake. And uh, also this is uh, actually the second location of the Kern County Fairgrounds. The original location was closer to downtown. Uh, 24th Street, I believe it was P, somewhere down in there. They actually used to land airplanes out there in the early 1900s prior to uh, Meadows Field being opened. And I don't know when the fairgrounds moved to Union and Ming, where they are now, but uh, I believe it was in the late 50s. To be wrong about that, uh, drop a comment below if you know. I'm just guessing. All right. Okay. This is where Kern County equipment was. It was the uh, International Harvester dealership. Uh, selling tractors and trucks and farm implements, I suppose. But uh, the building was 
completely destroyed and one person lost their life. Uh, and you'll see in the picture the destruction. But and as you can see, this business building was very heavily damaged. This, uh, I had to uh, reach into the archives of my dad's memory and ask him where this was because the uh, photographs I have of it have no address. And this is at the corner of 19th and Kern. Kitty cornered from the Wool Growers restaurant. All right, this is where Kern County equipment was. Well, I thought it might be interesting to go look around at some of the buildings that did survive essentially intact uh, with either little or no damage. And one of those was the uh, Southern Pacific Railroad Depot right here behind me. It's a UP de depot now, but back then it was Southern Pacific. It is a completely unreinforced masonry building. Uh, it's covered in stucco now and has been for quite some time, but all the brickwork is there. Places of the stucco is falling away that you can see the bricks. Uh, there are signs on all the entrances that it's an unreinforced masonry building, so you, basically you enter at your own risk. And uh, I guess that way if you if they have an earthquake while you're in there now and it collapses on you, you can't sue them. One of the things that is uh, pretty amazing about uh, not just this building, but uh, a lot of the uh, buildings right here in East Bakersfield in this general area that, that I'm going to show you, this, Narducci's, the Rankin, these places in East Bakersfield, uh, were all just, some of them, uh, Narducci's, which was the Sesmat Hotel at the time, was only uh, a block over from Kern County equipment, which was completely destroyed and people killed in it. And uh, the depot here behind me is only uh, about two and a half blocks away from that. So it's pretty amazing that some of these buildings are stored, especially take into account the uh, Southern Pacific Depot is a big building. A lot of the uh, buildings that survived were smaller compact buildings. I don't know if that helped, but the depot is obviously a huge building and survived intact. So let's cruise around to look at some of these uh, buildings that did survive. And uh, this building, this is the Rankin Hotel. As it was been the Rank Rankin Hotel for a long time. Uh, it was uh, damaged severely in a fire about a year and a half ago. It's being rebuilt now. But this is another one that survived intact. It had stores on the bottom floor. And it is actually one of the places where train crews used to stay in the old days when Bakersfield was a division point. And this building, the St. Francis Hotel and the Pyrenees Cafe, uh, this is a an unreinforced brick building and cinder block. It was built with both, but it uh, survived the earthquake intact as well. And this building, which is Narducci's Cafe, which is now closed, but it was originally, and at that time, the Sesmat Hotel. And, uh, this is on uh, 20, East 21st Street, which was East Humboldt Street back then. And uh, you can see the original brickwork on the bottom below the windows there. Uh, that All that brickwork is still there. It's just been covered up by stucco and this building survived the earthquake intact. And this is the Sill building. It was built in 1939. And although it has a brick facade, it is actually a reinforced concrete structure and survived the earthquake with no damage. Or very little and this is the Haberfeld building it was completed in uh, 1929 and the only damage the Haberfeld building suffered was some of the uh, uh, I can't remember what they're called the eagles and stuff they put on top of buildings uh, I can't recall the word right now but uh, some of those uh, fell off and were broken but no one was injured here and the building itself survived intact. All right, this is the the old Brock's building. It's an antique mall now, but uh, while the original Brock store wasn't destroyed near the quake, it suffered enough damage that the family decided to rebuild it and uh, expand it. And
After the 1919 fire, the Hockheimers built this store at 20th and Chester. In 1924, it became Brock's when that family bought the business. During the upgrade and expansion following the 52 earthquake, Brock's operated from these two tents in Westchester. This is the uh, California Theater, which uh, was actually showing a movie at the time. The earthquake happened at 440, about 442 or something like that in the afternoon. And they were showing a film, but no one was injured and the building only sustained minor damage. This building here was originally the uh, Security Trust Company, it was a bank. Here's a shot from the 1920s when it was still Security Bank. You see it right there on the corner. And, uh, and later on it was called the Union Stage Depot and it was a, a bus service. And here's a shot of it from a different angle, looking down in Chester, when it was the Union Stage Depot. But uh, you can see in the older pictures that it's when, when it looked like this still, and then it had a facade put over it uh, at some point. The city decided to tear that facade off a few years ago and restore it to its original looks and did a really good job. I just couldn't do this without showing this picture of a car buried by bricks. I'm not sure where it was. It's just a really neat picture. This was originally the Kern County Courthouse at Truxton and Chester in 1912. It became City Hall and was City Hall until 52. And that is the City Hall that was built after the earthquake. It has that square steel and glass uh, architecture as well, but it does have a brick facade, which uh, does make it look better than the courthouse. And this magnificent structure was the courthouse that was built in 1912. It faced Chester Avenue, and what a magnificent structure it was. And the structure behind me here, this big garish stainless steel green and glass square structure, is what they replaced that beautiful courthouse with. And I'm sure this uh, looked real cool in 1960 when everything was going to the modern look, but it sure doesn't look good anymore. It's too bad they couldn't have done something uh, similar to the old courthouse. All right, well, that will conclude my little piece on the uh, 1952 earthquake, the 68th anniversary of it. As I said at the beginning, I really wanted to get this put up on the anniversary, which would have been uh, Saturday the 22nd, but it just wasn't possible. One of the uh, comments I see a lot on history pages is why didn't, uh, you know, that shows the beautiful architecture of Bakersfield and people say, why did they get rid of that? Why did they build these new buildings? Well, a lot of those buildings that you see in those pictures were either destroyed or damaged beyond repair in the 1952 earthquake. Many of those buildings were very old, uh, unreinforced masonry, and they were deemed unsafe. The owners just decided to rebuild with newer materials and some of the uh, uh, public buildings, most of the public buildings were uh, replaced in favor of modern architecture like the courthouse, uh, the beautiful old courthouse. It was uh, damaged pretty badly, but uh, they wanted to replace it with the new glass and steel structure. But anyway, the 1952 earthquake is why much of that, uh, much of those structures uh, are no longer here. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this. Uh, I want to thank my dad for uh, telling me where some of these things were when I couldn't find the addresses of them. Um, I want to thank uh, the uh, uh, deacon at St. Francis Church for, for uh, helping me with some of the information on St. Francis Church, exactly where it was, and uh, letting me borrow a book that uh, talked about the history of it, and uh, it was very interesting. So anyway. If you have any more ideas, uh, I'm still waiting for my shoulder surgery, but I uh, don't hesitate to send me some ideas. If you have things you want to see, uh, see me go over, I'll see what I can do about it. Like, share, subscribe, click on the bell if you want to be notified of future content, and we'll see you all later.